romance of an investment counsel's daughter by Margaret Albright. Oh, why doesn't she take up basket weaving or Indian folk dancing? Hi, Dad. Oh, hi, honey. <laughs> I was just digging through some old stuff in the hall closet a while ago. You know, looking to see what we could throw out, and I came across this. I agree. It ought to be thrown out or blindfolded and shot. You're wrong, Margie. I guess I never really took time enough to read it before. I think it's very good. You do? One rejection slip and you quit. Now, where's that old Albright stick to it, isn't it? I don't know. I guess it all must have stuck to some other Albright. Don't you know that some of our greatest authors submitted their first stories 10, 20, and 100 times? Dad, this is wonderful. Your attitude. Could I ask you something? What is it, baby? What's going on at the office that makes you want to get me interested in writing again? You think that everything I do, I have to have some underhanded reason, don't you? Dad, let's face it. This isn't worth the ink it's squeezed out of the ribbon. Oh, forget about it. I don't know what I'm talking about. I guess it's asking too much for father to want his daughter to amount to something. Dad, are you serious? I looked up this list of publishers just to waste my time. Forget it. It is a list of publishers. Oh, forget it. I'm sorry, Dad. I thought you were kidding. Do you really think it's good? I've said all I'm going to say. And besides, if you want me to feel that you've at least given yourself half a chance, you begin right at the top of that list and start submitting your story. <laughs> Dad, you're wonderful. And besides, who's going to say that some publisher won't like it? Besides? Besides what? Uh, uh, nothing, just besides. <laughs> you know, uh, just besides. Margie, you must be out of your mind. You can't do a thing like that. My first story sold because I wrote about something I knew about. That's what they told us in school, right? About what you know about. What do I know about but my father's investment business? But you can't fool around with police headquarters. I've got it all figured out. A girl wanders into police headquarters of a great metropolis. She's a victim of amnesia, can't remember who she is or where she's from. A handsome detective takes her case personally. Romance, intrigue. Who is this strange girl? She's my ex-girlfriend, currently doing time for monkeying with the police department. Listen, Freddy, I'm going to have a career whether you like it or not. I'm going to write about interesting things, and I know how to find interesting things. Go home. I will not. Go home. No, and I'd like to see you throw me out. <laughs> such a jellyfish. How can she be so madly in love with me? Police headquarters? Police headquarters? That's right, Mr. Albright. I thought you ought to know. You mean she's going to pretend to be an amnesia victim and wander into the city hall? Oh, Freddie, Mr. Honeywell is down there right now with the kangaroo of police. I mean, the, the, the commissioner of hoppers, the jumpers, I mean. Oh, I've got to stop her. I've got to stop her. <laughs> Victim. Now, Dad, take it easy. I'm not causing any trouble. I'm just working on my writing like you want me to. I want to talk to you. Well, I'd rather talk to you after you've calmed down. Bye, Dad. You come back here. Yes, sir, I like a level-headed man like you, Mr. Honeywell. Commissioner, not only am I level-headed, but everyone associated with me is the same way. Fine. There's no room for pranksters and scatterbrains in the kangaroo. I'll make my final recommendation for you to the Royal Board the day after tomorrow. Thanks, Commissioner. Thanks, oh. sir. Young lady, watch where you're going. Now see what you've done. Yeah. What are you doing here anyway? I can explain everything. I, I was only trying to help. Will someone please explain something to me? Are you two trying to become writers, too? And who's that clumsy old guy who bumped into Dad? See, Dad, always thinking of you. That clumsy old guy happens to be the police commissioner. Oh. 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 Who hit me? It was you. And you're the one who bumped into Mr. Honeywell. Oh, my spinal column is broken. Mr. Honeywell, who are these people? Well, I've never saw them before. I 
I'm confused about a lot of things, Mr. Commissioner, but one thing's pretty obvious to me. What just happened shouldn't have happened, and I just happened to be here when it did happen, and if you think I just made a quick exit, you're not just thinking it because it just happened. <laughs> it just happened to me, too. I'll put him in jail. Oh, my back. If I ever see that man again, I wonder who they were. Of all the places to go, right where the one man that means so much to Mr. Honeywell happens to have his office. Well, I didn't know about Mr. Honeywell and his royal kangaroo kick, and I wasn't trying to cause trouble. I was just trying to get a story as good as the one I sold. Oh, that story. Why did I ever do it? Why did you ever do what? Nothing, but why did I ever do it? Margie, this is an order. You stay away from anything that's even close to the police department until Mr. Honeywell gets in that darn kangaroo outfit. All right, Dad, all right. I had to knock the police commissioner into a wash tub. Me, Vern Albright, I did it. Any other father would have knocked an ordinary citizen into a wash tub, but not Margie Albright's father. No, he had to do it to the police commissioner. I'll bet you'd get into trouble even weaving baskets. <laughs> Right, Commissioner. See you this afternoon, 2.30. Right. Not one single kangaroo has shown cause why I shouldn't get in. Why, it looks like I'm a cinch. Uh, good feel, Mr. Honeywell. But something could go wrong at the last minute. What was the big surprise you had for me about Margie? Relax. We'll be hearing any second. I saw the letter in the mailbox when I left this morning. What letter? From the magazine, accepting her story. You mean some magazine actually bought that monstrosity? Oh, they're not going to publish it. <laughs> the editor of the magazine's a good friend of mine, but he wouldn't go that far. But you did talk him into buying it, huh? Well, let's put it this way. I gave him a check for the amount they're sending her. All right, you're pretty cute, bribing a magazine. Hi, Dad. Hi, Mr. Honeywell. What's up, honey? This. What is it, dear? From Encore Publications. It's Margaret Albright. The enclosed check in the amount of $100 will constitute payment in full for your story entitled, They Bought It. You were right, Dad. It was good. What did I tell you? Mr. Honeywell, I'm afraid we've got a writer on our hands. Congratulations, Margie, my dear. How many more stories do you think you can keep yourself busy with right away? Plenty more. From now on, I'm not going to do anything but write. And I owe it all to you. Well, I'll see you later. You've got to get home and start hitting the old key. Bye, honey. Bye, Margie. Bye. All right, you're a genius. Oh, Mr. Honeywell, I can't go through with it. Oh, yes, you can. Look, all right. You always said that you wanted Margie to have a hobby anyway. So what's the difference? Oh, that's right. A hobby's a hobby. It can't hurt her. And it will keep her out of trouble. Even Margie can't get into trouble writing. Mr. Dodan? Come in, Margie. What's cooking? I've got an idea for a story, but I don't want to get into any trouble with the police. You know what I told you about Dad and Mr. Honeywell. Of course, dear. What's the new story about? It's about the waterfront, the sound of muffled foghorns, the cold mist comes rolling in, a scream in the dark, ah! a knife whizzes through the air and lodges between two shoulder blades. Uh. Wonderful. I always enjoy a good love story. Mrs. Odette, this is going to be a mystery. I know just the place to get the atmosphere, but I'm afraid of coming up against the police. And I don't want to cause Dad any more trouble. Mr. Honeywell almost fired him. Oh, you won't get into any trouble with the police at that place. What place? The place where you're going to get that atmosphere. But I didn't say what the place was. Who cares? It sounds interesting, and I'm going to talk you into going. It's the Buccaneer Saloon, the toughest place on the waterfront. Oh, splendid. Splendid. No, I'm afraid not, Mrs. Odette. Dad's been swell about my writing, and I'm not going to use it to cause him any trouble. Oh, come on, Margie. It's such fun to go slumming. You meet so many old friends lying around the sidewalk. <laughs> no. I'd love to go, Mrs. Odette, because I think I could get an inspiration for a good story, but Mr. Honeywell and Dad would... Honey, if you're going to have a career, you've got to put everything else aside. Besides, your father said he wanted you to make something of yourself, didn't he? Yes, but a place like the Buccaneer Saloon, it's really the toughest place there is. Honey, in the first place, we're not going to become involved with the police. 
And in the second place, your father's going to be proud the day you sell a really big story. And in the third place, oh, there's old age for you. I had him in the third place. Now I can't remember it. We just go in and listen to how the characters talk. You'll get the feel of mingling with cutthroats and riffraff. Sure, that's all. No police, no trouble, and you get the story. Mrs. Odette will do it. This is my last try. If it doesn't work out, I'll give up writing. We'll go around nine. They say that Joyce is really roaring by then. If you see Freddie Wilson, not a word. I don't want him tipping my father off again. Don't worry. I wouldn't tell that jellyfish anything. See you tonight. Okay, honey. There's no doubt about it, I am a jellyfish. A buccaneer saloon! <laughs> buccaneer saloon? That's right, the buccaneer saloon. This time she's really liable to get in trouble. Freddy, Freddy, keep your voice down. I don't want Mr. Honeywell to find out about... It. You don't want Mr. Honeywell to find out about what? Uh, nothing, Mr. Honeywell. What's Margie up to now? Oh, she's got a wild idea for another story. Well, stop her. Call her up and lay down the law. Well, that's the worst thing in the world. You can't give Margie an order. If she's determined to see how a bunch of thugs act... Wait a second. Oh, another brilliant idea, huh? Oh, Mr. Honeywell, this may cost a little money, but, but I think it'll work. We'll discourage Margie. We'll disillusion her. We'll make her so disgusted with writing that she'll quit forever. What are you talking about? I came in on about the fifth reel of this thing. Mr. Honeywell, if getting into the kangaroos means as much as you say, and you want to keep Margie out of trouble, I'll guarantee to get her over this writing kick, but, but you'll have to say one thing. All right, what is it? Tell me that money is no object. Fine. Money is no object. You can have all the money you want, and I'll deduct it from your salary. Thanks. What's your idea, Mr. Albright? I'm going to rent the Buccaneer Saloon for tonight, no matter what it costs. I don't get it. Oh, Freddy, this is going to be really expensive. You just wait until Margie meets some of Vern Albright's tough waterfront characters. Just as I heard it was. It looks like a reunion on the late husband's side of the family. I want you to know I have it, in case we need it. Brass knuckles. We won't need those. Don't you think so? I got it stuck in with a lead weight in it pinned under my skirt. Yes? Good evening, madame, mademoiselle. May I show you to a table, please? Just let me know when you're ready to order. We're having new menus printed. The old ones were so drab. We're having the new ones done in pink with suggested lace trimming. Don't you think that's rather chic? Very, very nice. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Thank you. Gentlemen, I'm a bit confused. Someone ordered iced tea and lady fingers, and uh, somebody else ordered milk and sugared oatmeal cookies. Would you kindly identify yourselves? I ordered the milk and the sugared oatmeal cookies. The other order is Lefty. Thank you, Lefty. Wonderful chap, Edmund. Salt of the earth. And incidentally, apropos of nothing, I understand he excels at badminton. This is the toughest place on the waterfront? Sounds like a marshmallow factory. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, but could either of you ladies help me? What do you want? Well, when you do the cross stitch, is it knit two and purl one, or knit one and purl two? Oh, I'm afraid I've been too forward. I do trust you'll excuse me. Where are we, you bastard? Now, now, Charles. I'll have to confess that remark and insist upon an immediate retraction. Sorry, old thing, but I must stand on my original contention. Very well, old chap. We'll settle it the difficult way. But remember, I was willing to arbitrate. Fight? 
All right, but remember the rules. The first one that misses loses the argument. Agreed. You ready, men? One, two, three, go! writing at breakfast this morning. She's all over it. <laughs> Don't forget, Mr. Albright, I'm the one who tipped you off. I hate an informer. <laughs> Hi, Betty. Hello, Miss Albright. Maggie, it isn't like you to give up so easy. Couldn't we give it just one more whirl? No, I'm disgusted. I just hope Dad isn't too disappointed in me when I tell him. I got a habit to you, Albright. Only a genius would have thought of hiring that whole joint and filling it with a bunch of actors. <laughs> I've got to admit it was pretty clever. Did you get a load of Margie's face when they started with that patty cake routine? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you certainly came through with a way to stop what you started when you bought her first story yourself through your publisher friend. <laughs> Just a trick, the whole thing. My story never was any good. Pretty underhanded, if you ask me. I think they deserve a little paying back. If it had been for anything more important than Mr. Honeywell's ego and that darn kangaroo club. Okay. Margie isn't going to get mixed up with the police, but wait till you see Mr. Albright and Mr. Honeywell. Margie! Oh, Margie! Good, she's not home yet. Come on in. Anytime we put one over on her, I think we're entitled to a little celebration. What do you have, Mr. Honeywell? Mr. Albright! Mr. Albright! I tried to stop her, but she wouldn't listen. Margie, or what she done? She decided she'd get some publicity first. You know, big headlines. Then, after she was famous, the publishers would buy anything she wrote. Mrs. Odette, what she done? What she done? She had them do it. Had who do what? She picked out a big, important-looking house at this address and had two men bury her alive in a box. <laughs> Buried alive? But don't worry. They put down a pipe for her to breathe through. Oh, Margie. I was going to call the police, but because of Mr. Honeywell and the commissioner, I decided to come here instead. I'm glad you did. All right, we've got to keep this quiet. Keep it quiet? Fire me. Do anything. <laughs> oh, buried alive. Give me that address. Uh, Freddy, uh, go to the basement. Get me a shovel. I'll, I'll meet you out front. Uh, get me the police department. You are, Brian. Shut up. Uh, uh, get me an ambulance. Uh, send me the rescue squad. Uh, uh, send everybody. Yeah, get, get me everybody. <laughs> I came through for you in the end, didn't I, Albright? Sure, sure. You hope to get it up in the way before the police commissioner comes. I don't understand me, Albright. I want to be a kangaroo. Oh, dig, dig. <laughs> Courage, honey. Your daddy's coming. Mr. Honeywell's coming, too, Margie. <laughs> Oh, why doesn't she answer? I don't know, poor little thing. I hope she doesn't get me in trouble with the commissioner. Uh, dig, dig. <laughs> in confusion? No, just a case of a small world. See you later, Commish. What's the rush? The spinebreaker, too. You'd better stick around. 
But breathe slowly, conserve the oxygen, and don't give up, baby. Yeah, we'll get you up. Be ready for a fast getaway. Margie, how many times have I told you not to bother me when I'm doing something important? Your father's right, Margie. Go away. We gotta dig you up out of here. Margie! Margie! Hi, Dad. What do you know? Mr. Honeywell, she's not buried here at all. Isn't it wonderful? Now we can get away from here before the commissioner there finds out who we are. Yeah. Hello, Commissioner. No buried girl. You know each other. And now this. Oh, please, Commissioner, don't hold this against Mr. Honeywell. After all, what's the hold in the lawn among friends? Gentlemen, guess whose lawn this is. Your lawn? Small world, huh, Dad? Any questions, Mr. Honeywell? <laughs> Now, Dad, be honest. You started the whole thing, you and Mr. Honeywell. Well, maybe it was our fault, but Margie, of all the crazy things you ever did... But Dad, the Commissioner was wonderful when I explained things. He's still going to get Mr. Honeywell and the kangaroos. Okay, but promise me one thing. No more tricks, huh? Okay, no more tricks. Well, <laughs> that's my little Margie. <laughs>